Now that we already know the basics about the node editor and we already made a little compositing scene there, we're moving forward now and try to achieve some very common effects such as depth of field, a little bit of mist, which in this case is not mist, it's more like the volume of the water, but the effect is the same. And maybe we'll add some noise to this image and also some more coloring, not only a plain color like now. So this is our previous setup. We're going to keep it. We're going to work on top of this. Actually, on the beginning, we're going to add some more. I want to add first this uh, kind of mist or sense of volume of the water. So what we are going to use now is the uh, the Z value. The Z is the depth. Is the depth value which if you connect it to the viewer you will see a little plain white or a little bit of gray maybe but depending on the size of your your scene we need to fix this size we do it by using the vector node type map value and this looks really tiny node there but it got really powerful settings like you can see here this is the depth value of our scene. By changing the offset, I'm moving back and forth on my scene through the depth of it. I can make this range smaller as well. By default it's one, which is too big for a normal scene. You can see if I make it smaller. Now the offset will let us move a little bit more smoothly back and forth through our scene so what I want here is a black and white image actually it's a, yeah, it's like a grayscale of our depth so the black whatever is black is going to be in focus and whatever is, is uh, white is going to be defocused or uh, with mist in this case because we know that the RGB curves have a fact value which is the factor factor value which it's, it controls the influence of this uh, RGB curves in our image so if we use a black and white image for this which is the case of our map value you can control which part of the images are going to be colored and which of them of the which parts of this image are going to stay on the original color so let's move this a little bit what we are going to use now it's another node to make this a little bit more easy to control. We're going to connect the output from the map value into a color ramp which is into the converter type of nodes. This way if you are already familiar with these color bands on ramps or, or any other part of Blender now you see that you have a lot more control on it. You can move back and forth add more points if you want you can change the interpolation type of this curve as well is very nice. Let's try to put some more noticeable color there. Now we're talking. So you can see how it becomes more blue or darker along the distance well if you make it really obvious then it will not look much really real you can also change interpolation type of this curve as we said you 
this plane gives a more, uh, much more smooth uh, transition between these colors, which is nice. So you can see there is a really ugly sharp edge in our, uh, in our image now. That's because the Z buffer, the one we are using here, the Z buffer, is not doesn't get uh, anti-aliased, doesn't get over sampling on it. And uh, that's sometimes that's a problem because we need to, we need to have it. So that's something we are going to fix later. Now we are going to just stay like this. And the node I'm playing with now is a defocus node. It's behind the filter type of nodes. And as you can see, it blurs the image you change the Z scale slider you can see how it how it changes but now I'm using the output from the map value node as you can see there there is a lot of black dots that's because it's too too blurry actually it's just too much way too much so luckily there is an option to add a maximum to this blur maximum amount of blur which I had it here in 20 and uh, the black dots are gone I disable preview so we can see the real thing how the, the, the defocus is going to look like now the render looks exactly like as before and now it will look composite. The composite is done at the end. But it looks like the old composite. That's because we are we, we didn't connect our current defocus thingy with anything. Blender is rendering whatever is connected to the composite node, the one at the end of the chain. So you have to have in mind that. can see also the viewer node in the image editor as well. Whenever you add a, a viewer node it will become an image called viewer node which you can access everywhere. I will also enable min and max there to make the calculation a little bit more faster for Blender. It clamps the values of the Z buffer to well, 0 and 1. Now I'm just replacing the original inputs for the image for the color correction and the glowy thing with the result from my defocus node. So I'm getting a little bit messy here. It's too blue there. Nice. So another thing I want to add actually. It's another uh, a node I really like, which is the glare node. Oh yeah, you can go really far with the with the defocus. Which is fun, but it's totally unrealistic in this case. In some other cases, it, it could look cool, but here is like too much. I think 30 is a good value for it. So, as said, uh, I got this nice node I wanted to show you, which is a glare node. Which I used to, to use it a lot to give some nice coloring to my scene. Add it, filter, under filter, glare. You have many kinds of glare types like streaks is the, f the first one but uh, that's the only one we are going to use now. You can play with the with the others afterwards. So you can see nothing changes if you change the mix node is going to to see how much you're going to see how much 
the the effect itself affects the original image. If you put it in one, you will only see the effect like now. If you put it in zero, you see both like a mix between the original image and the effect. But to actually see something, you have to lower the threshold threshold uh, slider, which is by default in one. You want to put it somewhere. Well, you will see how much effect you want to see. But the cool thing about this node is that kind of nice coloring gives to the image. Well, I like it, but sometimes it's not the best choice. Here, because it's all gray, it doesn't give a lot of color variation. So you can always play with it. Another RGB core before the glare and then overlay the glare above the, the color correction image. So you get this nice color variation. Instead of only one color like we had before, now we got some more warm colors somewhere and uh, maybe some green, a little bit of blue which I, I like it a lot. So let's collapse all these nodes. You can do it by hitting H. and uh, H again to to expand the node. So that way it also works with multiple nodes. That way you don't have that many amount of nodes which can get really really messy. Which is a little bit how I have it now. Eek. So the last effect I want to add here is the... now it looks too plain, too like plastic or yeah I, I want the images to have some noise actually which is something uh, some people used to do in the in another in another software like 2D software but here we'll do it directly in Blender by choose, by adding a node type input and then texture and then you just choose the texture you want as you can see there, this is a, I call it noise, but it's actually a clouds with a really low, low scale. So we're not going to connect anything to the input of this no uh, texture, we're just going to overlay this texture on top of the result of our entire composition. composition. There. So you can see, I don't know if you can see it because of the compression of the video, but let's try to... Okay, well, something like that, but wait, no, no, not that much. You can also change the size, the scale of it. You can put a, a map value in, in there. But I think that's okay. No, not that five, of course, is way too strong. It's still there. I value between one and two. It gives a nice feeling already. So now we got some little bit more of color. We got uh, a nice depth feeling there with the coloring and uh, the depth of field and we also have um, noise at the end and we got a real mess of notes over there so let's move to even more